a moment to let everyone come in from the waiting room. Hi, can you hear me? If everyone could please mute themselves. Good morning, this is a hearing board for the city of Boston. Today is September 9th, 2020. Again, if you're not presenting, please mute yourself. This hearing is being conducted pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing is being recorded. Please note that the chat should only be used for individuals requesting to testify and any comments or questions placed in the chat will not be answered. Any questions can be directed to licensing board at boston.gov as well as any additional testimony. All matters heard today will be taken under advisement and voted on by the board tomorrow at the public voting meeting. Calling Boston Shawarma Inc. doing business as Boston Shawarma located at 315 Huntington Avenue has applied for a common vigilar license to be exercised on the above in two rooms on the first floor with the kitchen and storage and rear. Manager Coco Topachian, hours of operation, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Is there anyone present for Boston Shawarma? Yes, I am. I am the manager of Boston Shawarma, so I am Mohammed. And I apologize, I skipped over introducing uh, Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. <laughs> and no problem. No problem. Uh, Mohammed, if you could please state your full name for the record. Uh, Mohammed Ijaz. So, Mohammed, uh, who is Coco Topagian? Uh, he's the owner of the restaurant. Okay. And could you tell us what you're proposing? So we applied for common victory license uh, and we submitted all documents. Okay, what will you be serving? Yes, we are serving like takeout and dine-in, but right now we don't have any dine-in. Okay, um, when you do have dining, how many seats will there be? Uh, so we have around 26 seats. Okay. And what days will you be operating? So we are operating seven days, 11 to 11. Okay, can you describe the kind of food you'll be serving? Uh, so it's like a Mediterranean food. So we are serving shawarma and salad and falafel. Okay. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions? Is there anyone here who would like to testify in support of this application? Madam Chair, members of the board, Shanice from the with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we have no questions or concerns with this proposal. Uh, we believe that this is a great location given, given the um, high restaurant location in the area and we would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Thanks, Shanice. Is there anyone here, anyone else here who would like to testify in support? Is there anyone who wishes to testify in opposition of this application? Okay. Moving to item two. Calling Emma Corporation Huang K Vietnamese Restaurant, located at 272 to 274 Adams Street, has applied for a common vigilar license to be exercised on the above in two rooms on the first floor, kitchen and storage and rear. Manager V Nok Yen Ta. Hours of operation 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Is there anyone present for Emma Corporation? Uh, yes, I am. Um... Good morning or hi, my name is Vu, I'm uh, V Husband. Uh, we are going to open the uh, Vietnamese restaurant on 272, 274 Adam Street. Um, the operation will be uh, seven days per week from 10 to 10. Uh, we'll be serving uh, technically Vietnamese uh, food, like uh, soup, hot soup, uh, fried rice, uh, there are some uh, uh, Spring rolls, if you guys are familiar with it. Um, 
uh, we try to bring our uh, cuisine into our uh, community and uh, uh, serve in the, uh, the uh, people of um, our two corners uh, in the Boston area in general. Okay, thank you. Uh, could you tell me how many seats you'll be having when you're able? Are you planning on doing dine-in or is it just takeout? Uh, we do in dine-in and takeout to ma'am. The uh, capacity of the uh, restaurant will be uh, 48 people uh, in full seating. Um, and um, yeah, it's 48 people. Okay. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions? None, thanks. Is there anybody that would wish to testify in support of the application? Madam Chair, members of the board, Shanice Funzo with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services on behalf of my colleague, Hua Pham. Um, this proposal went before the Fields Corner Civic Association and received full support. Um, and we have no questions or, or concerns and would like to go on record support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Commissioner, members of the board, Karen Foley, Council on East West Abbey George's office would like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify in support of this application? Is there anyone who wishes to testify in opposition of this application? Okay, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Item three has been removed from the agenda. Calling April 23 Florist LLC doing business as April 23 Cafe located at 222 Newberry Street has applied for a common bitular license to be exercised on the above in two rooms on, fir on the first floor with kitchen in front and storage in rear. Manager Huixing Jai, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Is there anyone present for April 23 florist? Hi, I'm Qi Xingjia, the president of the cafe. Hello. Good morning. Could you tell us a little bit about the application? Yeah, we try to cover it for the CV license. Um, we try to do the dyeing and also take out, but for right now only the take out. We're doing some like bubble tea dessert cake, like bakery stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, the seating is about 18 seat. Okay. Thank you. And how many days a week will you be operating? Uh, we will be operating seven days a week. 11 a.m. to 9 p.m.? Yes. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Is there anyone who wishes to testify in support of this application that's present? Madam Chair, members of the board, Shanice Pinsel with the Mayor's Office of Services. Um, this proposal received full support from the community, including a letter of support from the Back Bay Association. At this time, we have no further questions or concerns and would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes to testify in opposition of this application? Uh, I'll, I'll continue to, to on the support side. I'm Conrad Armstrong from Marlboro okay. Street. Conrad Armstrong from representing the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. The applicant may have met with us and we have no, no, no objection. Thank you, Conrad. I didn't see you there. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to testify in support or opposition of this application? Okay, thank you very much. Thank Calling, you. Calling Deep Elm Inc. doing business as Deep Elm and Lone Star Taco Bar located at 477 Cambridge Street. Holder of a common bachelor seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the doing business as of the licensed business from Deep Elm and Lone Star Taco Bar to Lone Star Taco Bar, Attorney Stephen Miller. Hello, uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Rashi Monglek with Victor McQuilty and Miller. Uh, with me is Aaron Sanders. I believe I saw him on the chat. Um, and so he is the president of Deep Ellum Inc. Um, we're here today seeking your approval for a change of DBA from Deep Ellum and Lone Star Taco Bar to just Lone Star Taco Bar. Um, as you know, with several of our you know, local businesses and, and community gathering places, you know, it's been difficult to, they've had to kind of revamp and restructure their concepts. And so this is one of those uh, situations where 
they're planning to, um, and as you're familiar with the premises, it's kind of two concepts within one restaurant space. And so they're planning to get rid of the deep alum concept. And so Lone Star will be uh, the whole, you know, take over that other half of the restaurant as well. And so there's no other changes to seating or operations, um, but the menu from Lone Star will kind of be, will be part of the whole restaurant space. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions, commissioners? Okay, is there anyone who wishes to testify in support of this application? Any opposition? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Calling BP Eatery LLC, doing business as Battery Park Bar and Lounge, located at 33 to 35 Battery March Street. Holder of a common vigiler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the doing business as of the license premise from Battery Park Bar and Lounge to Lily's Boston. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Hi guys, uh, this is Mark here for BP Eatery. Where is it? Mark, could you please state your full name for the record? Uh, Mark Grizzlak, G R Z E L A K, uh, one of the owners. Okay. Uh, it's under, I'm sorry, I'm under my GM's name. It's under Peter Simonelli for the video. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> see a mark, so. Okay, is, is Attorney Quilty here? Or are you gonna take the lead, Mark? I'm gonna take the lead. Uh, so we have, I mean, we have several other businesses in the city, obviously been a challenging summer. Uh, we bought Battery Park last year uh, and the concept had been around for 10 years. It's just, just not working. So we're just, uh, nothing changed with operations, seating, anything, just a name and menu change. Try to give it another shot. Okay. Um, same hours of operation and everything? everything. Okay. Yeah, no, no new equipment or uh, floor plans the same, all that stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Is there anyone here who wishes to testify in support or opposition? Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support of this application. We also heard from the Wharf District Council Neighborhood Association who, su who, su who supports the project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mark, good luck. Thank you. Calling Colwyn Management Inc. doing business as AC Hotel by Marriott South End, located at 225 Albany Street. Holder of an inholder restricted all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Kevin J. Matheson to Vincent Sassone. Attorney John Aida. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, John Aida, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. Here on behalf of the licensee, this is um, the AC Hotel by Marriott in South End, um, located in Inkblock. We're here for a change of manager. Um, Vincent Sassone should be in attendance. I believe he's on his cell phone, but just briefly by way of experience, he has over 10 years uh, experience in the hospitality and hotel industry. He was uh, previously uh, approved by this board in the ABCC uh, as a manager of record um, on the AC Hotel uh, by Marriott. Cleveland Circle. So he's, he's been vetted by this board in the ABCC and has that experience as well. Um, and if you have any questions, I think he is joining us by phone. Okay. And Mr. Sassone, are you here? Hi, I'm, uh, yes, Vincent Sassone here. I'm, I'm present. Okay. Thank you. So it's just the manager record change. That is correct, yep. Okay, I have no questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Legal Seafood LLC, doing business as Legal Harborside, located at 270 Northern Avenue. Holder of a common vigiler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Sean C. Salter to Christopher P. Castellana, attorney Richard Heller. Good morning, Madam Chair and the board. This is Rick Heller, uh, and I know Chris is on the call as well. This is for a change of manager. Chris has had experience in the hospitality industry for a number of years. 
he was on our liquor license at, in Cambridge at the, for the Charles Square restaurant, which closed in June, and we've transferred him to be on the liquor license at Legal Harbor Side. Okay. Chris, um, you're on the call, correct? Oh, I see Chris. Yes, sir. Oh, good. Yes, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, just a couple of questions for you, Mr. Castellana. Are you a citizen? Yes, ma'am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, ma'am. You have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, ma'am, I do. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Okay, thank you both very much for joining us today. Uh, I, just, I just want to thank the board and the administrative staff for making this as easy as possible during these times. Uh, you know, I'm an old person, so this is great for me. So thank you very much. Thank you. I do have a great staff. Appreciate that. Thank you. Calling La Posta Pizza LLC, doing business as Da La Posta, located at 12 Farnsworth Street. Holder of a common vitular seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to pledge the license to Tremont Construction Management LLC. Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My apologies. It looks like my video doesn't want to turn on for some reason, but I don't think you, you'll miss my face if you can hear my <laughs> voice. <laughs> um, this is a pledge to Tremont Construction Management LLC, who is taking a lien uh, on the license. Um, La Posta Pizza was in the midst of construction when COVID began, so the construction company is essentially securing their interest while um, things get worked back out with the lender because the, while the financing was approved, that was also put on the back burner of it with the bank because of uh, the timing of COVID. So right now the agreement with the bank and the construction entity is to get back on track and be done with construction by July of 20 or, or Jan July of 2021. Um, and at that time, we'll be hoping to apply to remove uh, this pledge on the license. Okay, thank you. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Is there anyone who wishes to testify in support or opposite, opposition of this? I'm Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Delaware North Boston Flight LLC, doing business as Boston Bruins Bar, located at 100 Terminal Road. Holder of an airport common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from full service bar in Terminal A in Boston Airport in one room on floor two, two entrances, two exits. Approximately total square footage of 1,430 square feet. Seating consists of 20 stools at bar, including two handicapped table seating for 20 and five stools at countertop, amending two full service bar and table seating in terminal A, space ASA0717 in Boston Airport. On one floor and one room, seating will consist of 20 stools at bar, including two ADA accessible seats, table seating for 37, 13 stools, and banquet seating for 13, including one ADA accessible seat, attorney Stephen Miller. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is John Aida, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller on behalf of the applicant, uh, Delaware North Boston Flight LLC. This is the Boston Bruins bar located at uh, Terminal A, uh, the satellite uh, position. And what we're looking to do, uh, an opportunity came up to expand into the adjacent space. Um, it's going to increase about 550 square feet. Um, and it's a perfect opportunity to do this permanent extension, um, considering the need for additional seating and precautions to, for the passengers and guests um, coming and going uh, from the airport to the airport on their flights. So we're looking to increase, it's gonna be additional 38 seats um, and the costs involved are mostly for the, the furniture, the additional tables, banquettes and seating. Okay, thank you. I don't have any questions, commissioners. Do you have any questions? Is there anyone who wishes to testify in support of this application or opposed to this application? Okay, seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Calling 100% Delicious Food Corporation located at 635 Hyde Park Avenue. 
Holder of a common vigiler seven day wine and malt beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license and location from the above to Power Couple LLC doing business as El Burro Restaurant located at 69 to 73 Bennington Street in one room on ground floor with dining area and bar, kitchen and storage area, seasonal April through October, outdoor patio and public property, 11 p.m. closing hour, in one additional room with service counter for takeout, main entrance at 73 Bennington Street, takeout entrance at 69 Bennington Street, Luis Santiago Laspria, manager, midnight closing hour, attorney Michael Ford. Good morning, Michael Ford representing uh, Power Couple LLC. I have with me uh, on the phone on this uh, hearing, uh, Santiago Lospria, who's gonna be the sole uh, sh owner, membership um, owner and uh, proposed manager. Uh, this is on uh, Bennington Street <clears throat> in, a, uh, in, a, in a commercial area. It's gonna be a full service, authentic Italian uh, trattoria restaurant with takeout. The seating inside will be 36. Um, seats. It's about 850 square feet. Uh, it's the site of a former bakery. Uh, it's also uh, going through a, the uh, PIC process uh, for an additional 14 uh, seats, which is all shown on the uh, floor plan that is before you. There was an abutters meeting uh, which held uh, with support and let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Lespria. Uh, he has a significant uh, experience. He worked as the uh, head server at Fratelli at the Encore uh, in 2019, uh, via restaurant for three years, 16 to 19, and head server at uh, Restaurante Toscano. Uh, it's a midnight, seeking a uh, midnight close, outdoor, 11 p.m. close, uh, lease 10 years. Uh, and it's going to be cash provided by uh, Mr. Lespria to uh, accomplish the project. And uh, he's here if you want to ask him any uh, further questions. Sure, thank you very much. Um, I don't see Mr. Lasparilla. Let's see. Maybe he's. He should be. Uh, Is it Santiago's yeah. iPhone? I'll be, I'm going to be a little in, in phone. Santiago, can you hear me? I think he's on mute. Hello, hello. There he is. Hi. That's him. That's definitely him. Good morning. Okay. Hi. Hi, Santiago. How are you? Very good. Thank you for asking. And you? Good. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. I have a thank few so questions. Much. I have a few standard questions that have not been covered by your attorney that we ask of every uh, manager of record on these applications. So you can answer, just answer yes or no. Are you um, a citizen? Yes, ma'am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am, ma'am. Your attorney explained that you do have experience in the food and beverage industry. Yes, I do. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of our board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, ma'am, yes, I do. All right, thank you very much. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions for this applicant? Okay. Um, and just one more question, which I think I forgot, um, Attorney Ford. Um, can you just describe for the record um, in more, a little bit more specific detail what the public need is for this type of license at this location? Well, the, the, the neighborhood, uh, I mean, the, the, this, the, the neighborhood in East Boston has been uh, booming and developing with more residences, uh, you know, taking over. And there's a need for somebody of uh, Mr. Lesbria's experience uh, ex to, to bring this type of, um, you know, this, this type of service. It's going to be a upper, sort of a, a, you know, upper scale with the uh, takeout feel. And I think that that's what he's, uh, going for and it's going to be uh, I think, I think it, exactly what the neighborhood is looking for and I would say that the public need is also further evidenced by the uh, neighborhood uh, meeting and receiving the, uh, the community support. Thank you. Is there anyone here who wishes to testify in support of the application? Good morning, yes. Madam. Members of the board, Nina Camelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on the record in support for this application. The Office of Neighborhood Services held an abutters meeting on August 23, and there were no concerns. Also, this proposal received strong support from East Boston Main Street. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lena. Yes, I'm glad it's only from East Boston Main Street, and I'm here uh, to support this project. Thank you. This is uh, Jorge Betancourt. I'm a local realtor from Century 21 in East Boston. I'm a, also a resident, and I support this project 100%. Thank you. This is Joanna Elsa here who wishes to testify in support. I'll ask one more time if there's anyone here who wishes to testify in opposition of this application. And seeing none, I thank you all very much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Calling St. Declan Corporation, located at 1883 to 1880 Central Street. Holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license business from the above to 1885 Center Street LLC, doing business as Boston Ale House at the same location. Williard Lombard, manager, 1 a.m. closing hour. Secondly, is petition to amend the description of the licensed business from two floors, three rooms, and kitchen on first floor, including function room and bar, storage and stock and basement, seasonal April through November, outdoor patio and private property with 44 seats, approximately 675 square feet, patio closing hour at 10 p.m., amending two and three rooms and kitchen on first floor, seasonal patio usage April through November on private property, same hours as restaurant, with 32 seats and standing for seven people, Seller for stock and employee use. Lastly, is petition to pledge the license, stock, and inventory to Commonwealth Bank. Attorney Marshall F. Newman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, Madam Chairwoman. This is Richard Joyce from Newman & Newman from Marshall's office. Um, just a couple housekeeping matters on this application. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we are not seeking, a, we are no longer seeking a pledge of the license to Commonwealth Bank. Uh, there will be no pledge needed. Um, Mr. Byrne has sufficient funding um, personally to support this project. Uh, second of all, there has recently, uh, since the application has gone in, been a $350,000 reduction in the uh, purchase price of the uh, real estate and the license itself, uh, now totaling uh, Two million four hundred thousand. Um, with respect to the application itself, on the line we have uh, the two principals, and the one of which is the proposed manager, William Lombard and Eddie Byrne. Uh, Mr. Lombard has approximately eight plus years of experience in the uh, industry in Boston. Uh, he served as a manager for two years at the House of Blues um, back in the uh, late 90s. He is familiar with the laws of the Commonwealth and the rules of this board. Um, and they are available um, to testify if necessary. Um, Mr. Lombard is TIP certified. And the uh, total uh, seating capacity is 196, and the outdoor uh, seating is 32. Um, and the only other um, issue is we met with the Neighborhood Association in August, and they voted in support of this project. Uh, thank you. Um, how many seats are on the patio? 32. Okay, this says 44. The, uh, I'm looking at the application. The application says 32. Okay. And the plans also support the 32. Oh, I see, yeah. Okay. You might have to clean up that description. Um, just make sure it's correct. Sorry, it, it, it's, um, I don't think it's correct on the agenda. Um, so let me see. I'm sorry, I don't, my agenda is cut off. Who, who would the manager of record be? William J. Lombard. Okay, I see. And he is Mr. also a 25% owner. And Mr. Lombard's here? Yes, he is. Uh, Mr. Lombard, um, I don't see you, but are you? I believe he's under the name uh, Julia for some. Okay. 
if you could just speak up or take himself off mute. Oh, there you are. Uh, are you a um, are you a citizen? Okay, I think you're on mute still. Um, I think we're having issues connecting to the audio. Leslie, is it okay if he just? I think if he if he comes up or something. Yeah, if he can just uh, nod when you ask the okay. question. Can you hear? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask the, the four standard questions for um, purposes of the record. Are you a citizen? Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Um, do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Oh, there we go, okay. So I just want to repeat, your answer to all four questions are yes? Yes. Okay, we can hear you now. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Um, is there anyone here who wishes to testify in support? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jack Duggan, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, just like to go on record in support. Um, as Rick and Joyce mentioned, they did go before the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council um, in late August and received their support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone here who wishes to testify in opposition of this application? Yes. Okay. I heard Ms. somebody. Mark, Mark Hornstein with Rose Pappenheimer of Butters. We live at 40 Hastings Street. Uh, and first of all, for the record, everyone is saying that the Neighborhood Association approved this request. Uh, with implication that it was unanimous. I don't believe that there was unanimous consensus in favor of this application. I would like to address two issues. Uh, one is that several years ago, the squealing pig, the former owners of the property, applied for certain privileges before this board. Uh, and certain guarantees were made uh, for the sake of neighborhood because our street is 100% residential. We simply intersect Center Street with its commercial establishments. Uh, I, don't, I, I believe it's reasonable to apply the same restrictions to the new establishment, the Boston Ale House, until they can prove that they're going to be good neighbors and not cause a lot of noise and, uh, and a bad behavior at closing time, which my understanding is was a major problem with prior uh, prior occupant and owner of that uh, of that building. Uh, also, no mention is made of whether there will be music in the uh, evening hours into the late night on the patio, which would definitely interfere with the peace and quiet of the neighborhood, particularly people trying to go to sleep. But that's the question I would propose. Uh, I would pose to the applicants. Uh, the second issue is parking. Uh, at the present time, Hastings Street is suffering from a severe parking overload. We have the perfect storm of parking uh, on our street. One is residents who don't have driveways. Two is all the commercial establishments on Center Street during the day. And the third is we have become the de facto free parking lot for the MBTA commuter rail. Uh, and now we're being asked to approve a bar situation which would be open presumably till 1 a.m. And there is no doubt in our minds that the parking for that establishment will overflow onto our street into the night. That has a severe um, effect on residents who may be coming home from work in the evening and uh, won't be able to find parking spaces on the street where we live and pay our taxes. And secondly, even now, uh, oftentimes people who do have driveways have their entrances either severely restricted or blocked by cars that are trying to squeeze in to the limited number of spaces on Hastings during the day and during MBTA hours. Uh, those are the points that I wanted to bring up in opposition to this particular application. And the question about music. Uh, and also posing the question to the own owners about plan for music. I would like to add my voice to uh, Dr. Hornstein's. Um, 
Let me reiterate that the neighborhood was not unanimous behind this. Uh, we sent an email to uh, Mr. Duggan to that effect. Uh, so there's not a lot of support, especially among the people in Lower Hastings Street. The switch from what the squealing pig is now for outdoor seating, which is till 10 p.m. to 1 p.m., which is proposed, is not acceptable. We've had a lot of bad experiences with people staggering out of um, whatever establishment was there and uh, and uh, walking quite noisily up the street and sideswiping cars. So 1 a.m. is really unfair, particularly to the abutter, uh, Mr. Peterson. Uh, and I'll just reiterate also the parking is, is uh, un unreasonable. We're being asked to bear the burden, the lion's share of the burden for the neighborhood so that this establishment can have patrons parking on our uh, street. So I'll finish with that. Uh, thank you both for joining us, but I just to clarify the outdoor patio closing hour is still going to be 10 p.m. Is that correct? No. Yes, the application says 10 p.m. Could the owner address the issue with music before we continue? Thank you. I, I can ask him to address it. This board doesn't, um, we don't license the music. That would be the entertainment side. But I'll ask the question, do you plan on having is it outdoor entertainment you're wondering about? Yes, Madam Chair, I, know the, I... I know the board doesn't explicitly uh, address the issue of entertainment, but having a bar open, which is your jurisdiction, coupled with the entertainment, I believe does fall under your purview. Thank you. Yes, I was going to get to that, but I just wanted to make it clear we're not making a decision today on entertainment, but I'm happy to direct that question to the attorney or to the applicants. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, Richie Joyce, once again. Um, with respect to the outdoor entertainment, we have no um, intention of having outdoor entertainment um, playing live music out there. Um, during the Neighborhood Commission, uh, we had said that no decision was made with respect to indoor entertainment. Um, we may at some point elect to do that. At this point, the current owner does have live entertain well, pre-COVID, did have live entertainment. Um, we don't know if that's something that we will continue or not, but okay. we are certainly not having live performances out on the patio and disturb the neighbors. That's not what we want to do. We want to be a good neighborhood restaurant um, and work with the community, as we said during the neighborhood meeting. With respect to the other issues that were raised, um, the parking, we are suggesting that um, all staff, uh, there is a municipal lot around the corner, all staff will park there. Um, we do intend on putting signs within the premises, um, asking people to respect the neighborhood and to um, attempt to park on Center Street uh, rather than in the neighborhood, especially during the evening hours. Again. We expect to be here for the long haul with this community and we want to work with this community. Okay, and I can assure you if there was an application for entertainment that would go through another public process. Uh, Madam Chairman, this is Joel Peterson. I'm at number 31. I'm the immediate um, neighbor to this establishment. I also have uh, the next two closest uh, neighbors from number 30 and number 33. We had a couple of questions that we wanted to make sure were put on the, on the record. Um, obviously, we're concerned that, that people uh, drinking and the bar will spill out of the Hastings Street and wake us up. The three houses closest to this bar, that's the three of us here in this room now, are home to 12 people and two dogs. Um, just that we're a neighborhood. Um, I think we've already asked, answered the issue about the patio hours, but um, there was a question about whether they would allow patrons to gather behind the, uh, at the patio and socialize after the 10 o'clock hour. I mean, um, there's some concerns about the new front door being right at the corner of Hastings Street and that creating a noise issue um, and a hangout issue. Uh, parking has been covered. Will, is, is, has there been soundproofing put into the building and are the are the owners on the property on a nightly basis? And uh, lastly, uh, the fence, which is owned by the, by the business, 
between my property and the access road to the back of the building has been down for a matter of months. And will they replace that in addition to the renovations that they're doing to the building? Thank you. I think that's everything that we've got. I wanted to give the applicants or their attorney an opportunity to address some of the concerns that just came up this morning. Um, Eddie, could you speak to the fence issue, please? Hi, guys. Yeah, so the fence, we know that the fence was obviously knocked down before we acquired the property. Is there a pause? I don't know if you guys are on a laptop. Is it possible to increase the volume? We can, I can hear you a little bit. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone else can hear you. Okay. So the fence was um, obviously knocked down before we acquired the property, but we will absolutely replace that fence for our neighbors. I mean, we'll make, I'll make sure that's done within the next, you know, six weeks um, regarding the fence. And Madam Chairwoman, if I may, with respect to, um, the manager and owners being on premises. Um, Mr. Lombard expects to be on the premises in excess of 40 hours, and Mr. Byrne will be in the premises between 10 and 20 hours uh, during the operating. And as we, again, these were some of the concerns that were raised during the community meeting. Um, we intend to be there for the long haul. Um, the manager, the two owners are going to be there are going to be available and are going to be responsible to the neighbors and address the concerns. Uh, one issue that wasn't raised during this meeting, but was raised during the com community meeting is trash pickup. And we're willing to work with our trash pickup company to work around the hours and obviously make sure that the neighbors are not disturbed for trash collection. Again, we are working, we want to work, we've worked, and we want to continue to work with the neighborhood um, in this existing location, existing licensed premises, and continue on to um, a better path. Obviously, in the past, there have been some concerns, um, and we hope we've addressed all of those concerns today. Madam Chair. Madam Speaker. Hi, my name is Marilyn Bully. I live at 39 Hastings, which is just up the street from the proposed new business. I'm looking at a copy of the licensing board notice that was sent to us in the mail. And we're concerned because in the second paragraph of this um, notification, it says that there are some amendations. Um, originally, uh, the business was scheduled to close at, um, the porch was scheduled to close at 10 a.m. 10 p.m. and it looks in the notice that that's been amended to closing at 1 a.m. and I'd like to I'd like the I did thank you for asking that question we just we did cover that a couple of minutes ago oh thank you I uh, it's the way I, our legal it's the way our legal notices are written they're first describing what the old license commissions were and then they're describing what the new license commissions are and the applicants have said now twice that they are closing the patio at 10 p.m. So I'm, I'm, then I'm confused because the, the thing that we were sent says 1 a.m. So there seems to be some no. confusion on the part of the, of the proposed owners. No, it says, I'm looking at, um, the bar has a 1 a.m. closing hour. The patio has a closing hour of 10 p.m. I don't see that in the notice we were sent. Um, I can read it to you. It says it's amended to in three rooms and kitchen on first floor, seasonal patio usage, April to November on private property, same hours as restaurant, restaurant closing at 1 a.m. Yeah, I think I addressed that when I first started out that there was, that we needed to clean up the description and for the third time, the patio is closing at 10 p.m. Can we get something in writing that says that? That goes on the license. When okay. we went to vote on it, these are the conditions that the licensing board puts on the license. So thank you for raising this now and again. I've made it clear now three or four times the patio is closing at 10 p.m. Thank you for pointing that out. These are these are standard conditions that go on the face of a liquor license. The closing hours, the description, the capacity. 
These are standard conditions that go on a license. We're doing our best to operate remotely so that business in the city of Boston can continue. And thank you for your understanding if there was perhaps something that we need to clean up in the description. This application has been around, I think, since March, my staff told me. So we're happy to be able to get business moving in Boston. And I thank everyone for joining us and giving us your concerns. I, if there are any more questions, I would suggest that you continue to reach out to the applicants and their attorney and to keep those lines of communication open. And is there anyone else who wishes to testify in opposition or has another question about the description as it was written in the legal notice or on the agenda today? We will clean it up for you right now. Madam Chairwoman, uh, my name is Michael Tobin and I represent uh, Teresa O'Sullivan at 30 Hastings Street and she would like to speak uh, in opposition to the proposal and I just reiterate the all the other concerns about the noise, the hours, the a uh, large patio, et cetera, that were voiced by the, uh, the pr previous um, opponents. Okay, and I'm just gonna repeat, there's been no application so far for entertainment outside or inside um, that has come before me. I'm also executive director of the entertainment board, so I haven't seen one. Right now we're just talking about the liquor license at this location that was previously licensed and the hours are not changing. Okay, next. Calling, calling Blue Hill Liquors, Inc. doing business as Discount Liquors located at 950 American Legion Highway, has applied for a retail package for all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. Front area for sales, real, rear for storage, separated by walk-in cooler. Manager, Nar N. Drakumar Patel, closing hour 11 p.m. Attorney Arthur Pearl. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My name is Arthur Pearl. I represent Blue Hills Liquors Inc. The principals are Pavan Patel, who is here in my office on another computer, and the other principal is Sharad Vadir, and he's on a telephone, and uh, the manager is Narendra Kumar. Uh, Narendra Patel, excuse me, and uh, he is also on the telephone. Uh, I submitted my affidavit relative to uh, published notice going in the news in the Globe on August 28th, and I'm mailing a certified mail return request to Abutters on August 31st. We're seeking an all alcohol package store license at the uh, Stop and Shop Plaza, located at 950. American Legion Highway uh, in Roslindale. Uh, this space was a liquor store for, I am advised, about 30 years. The owner got older and got sick and he closed the store a couple of years ago. Uh, this is an application for a new license, but it's very close to being a transfer from one owner to a new owner at the same location. The owner of this mall is Stop and Shop and I believe they wanted a liquor store back in the mall as it complements the other businesses. Okay. Having a liquor store back in the mall may even be a help to traffic in the area as people already in the parking lot shopping at Stop and Shop, Walgreens, don't have to then drive to another location to buy uh, a bottle of wine or craft beer. They can do it there. This mall contains uh, a TD bank, a stop and shop, uh, a gym, a dollar store, then there would be the store that we're proposing, and then there's rainbow dry cleaners, there's smiley dental, uh, there's a laundromat, there's a Boston House of Pizza, wing stop, rent a center, a flaming grill, and Walgreens. So it kind of is a fit into what's already there as they cover the, the gamut of businesses. The people who will own and operate this store are already in the liquor store business. They have experience. They have never had a violation of any sort with their license. Uh, I believe we forwarded the reviews of their store, which is already they have a store in Roslindale, 
and they're very positive reviews of how these people operate their store. Um, as, as a matter of fact, they were complimented on most of them for their extensive inventory and the way their staff mm -hmm. performs. Um, we had a meeting uh, with the community in Roslindale uh, the other week. They raised a concern with regard to uh, NIPS. And <clears throat> at that time, they asked me what we're doing. And I said, well, we're going we're to talk about it. I don't know what we're going to do because NIPS, it's, it goes two ways. I know that people say that there's a problem with NIPS and that people, uh, the wrong kind of people are buying them and they're throwing them away. I find that that does exist. I myself own a couple of liquor stores. Uh, and and I, I find that exists, but it's the, the minor, a very small minority who are doing that. Most people are buying it for valid reasons. They want to control their drinking. They want to use something in a recipe. Uh, they want to try something before they buy a larger bottle. And for all those reasons, NIPS um, are not the, uh, a, a total negative. However, my clients are already in the Roswell community running another business there, another store, and they want to be a good neighbor. And therefore my clients have said they will not sell nips at this store. If that would make the people come more comfortable knowing that there aren't going to be nips sold there, my people are very willing to do that. So that can be a condition of it. They're, they're not going to sell nips at this store. Um, our hours are going, our hours we anticipate being 10 a.m. to 10.30 uh, in the evening, Monday through Wednesday, uh, 10 to 11, Thursday through Saturday, and 10 to 6 on Sunday. Those would be our hours. Um, we've uh, set forth on the, uh, uh, with our application, the floor plan, so you can see what we anticipate um, as, as a setup of the store. We're gonna be building it out from scratch. Um, again, our people are familiar with the with the rules and regulations of Boston. They already operate a liquor store in Roslindale. They they've never had a problem there. Uh, they're highly rated, uh, and we would request an approval of of the application. Okay, thank you. I have a couple of questions for you. Could could you repeat for me? I, I missed it. What the hours of operation are in the days of the week? Yes, it was going to be Monday through Wednesday from 10 in the morning till 10.30 in the evening. On Thursday through Saturday, 10 in the morning to 11 in the evening. And Sunday, 10 in the morning till 6 in the evening. Okay, and you're, you have agreed to no nips? Yeah. We um, and then Mr. Patel, I see he's on here. Are you already an approved manager of record by the Boston Licensing Board? Narendra, he's he's on the phone, I think. Uh, I see Narendra, yeah. Are you, you mentioned he works in other liquor stores, but I'm just trying to get at whether or not he's an approved manager of record. If not, I'll ask him the four standard questions. He is, he is the manager of record on, on, on Corinth Avenue in Roslindale. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, um, for all new applications, we like to get on the record what the public need is for this type of application, which is a retail package store all alcohol license at this location. Could you describe what the public need is? Not so much the public support. You did talk briefly about this being a liquor store 30 years ago, for 30 years. Right. Um, could you elaborate on the public need for this type of license at this location? Sure, uh, and, and the people said it at the, at the hearing uh, that we had with them. They, they find that it's, it's the stores in that area, at least one of them, they were picking on, I don't know the name of the store, whatever, they don't like the store. They feel it's not operated properly, it's not clean, it's not people are hanging out there. They, they felt that that, and they wanted one in their area that they could go to and would like going to. They also liked the fact that they could go to stop and shop and go two doors down and use the liquor store. They could go to Walgreens and go a couple of doors down and, and, and be right there, not have to drive to another location. And they weren't really particularly happy with the current liquor stores. Whereas the people 
that are familiar with my clients score already in Roslindale speak tremendously highly of him, how he's improved that store from when he took it over. That had been, I think, Chance Liquors. He took it over and they've improved it. They fixed up the store. They brought in much more product. Uh, the people that work there, they, they, I keep commending them of how friendly they are and helpful they are. This is the kind of store that these folks in there, I know there were a couple of people uh, who, who seem to be opposed to it. I know that uh, uh, there was Rick and Lisa who run it were opposed to it, but most of the other people who were talking at that meeting all wanted it. I think there was one other person who made some sort of a, uh, an objection to it, but these people said they really wanted it in their community okay. close to home. Yeah. Just, just wanted to get to the public need part. Um, commissioners, do you have any other questions? Not at the moment, thank you. And I will ask if there's anyone here who wishes to testify in support. Hi, hi everyone, good morning. My name is Zoe Matthews. I just live across the street from 950 American Legion Highway in Stony Brook Village. And I completely support the liquor store as they, just like Arthur mentioned, there used to be one before. And it's just easy, flexible as a one-stop shop for shopping for every family or neighborhood rather than driving one mile on a different direction, stopping by and just adding more time to the day. So I completely support. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Andrew Murphy, and I would like to uh, testify in support of the location and the, uh, the liquor store. Okay, thank you. Anyone else who here who wishes to testify in support? Uh, yeah, my name is Gabriel, and I want to testify. I would like to support this application. So actually, it would be great to have a liquor store in back in this plaza. Uh, I guess they, it, we had a liquor store two years ago over there, and then after it's closed, and I go to like other liquor stores, so I have to like they don't have actually parking, you know, and I like park on a street, but like this plaza has plenty much parking, and I guess. It would be a great if they, we have like a clean and nice liquor store in that plaza. So I'll support this application. Okay, thank you. Hi, Monica Serrano, support as well. I live in the, the Hate Road around the mall and I would like to support and the reason why I would like to support is because of the convenience. I am a, a family who always are celebrating things and uh, I find that it's very convenient. Um, the fact that I go to the supermarket, go to the pharmacy, like uh, somebody mentioned before, the parking is already there. I don't have to worry about looking for another place and location to go find what I need. I love cooking and I use a lot of wine for recipes. And uh, yeah, I like to have my wines in my downtime at home. So I truly uh, support the need of the liquor store and, and, and the mall. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, anyone here wishes to testify in opposition to this application? Hi. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Coppinger from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, we would like to go on record in opposition to this uh, application. Uh, we don't believe there is a public need for a liquor store at this location. Uh, there are a number of liquor stores in the area. Um, it's not a knock on the owners. They're you know responsible owners. They've done a good job with the liquor store in Corinth Street. Uh, but this select area on American Legion Highway, we don't believe there's a need for another liquor store. Thank you. No. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is Caitlin Fleischman on behalf of Councilor Arroyo. I'd also like to go on record in opposition as there are already five existing liquor stores in the area. Um, neighborhood associations and residents have voiced their concerns and we hope all those are taken into consideration. Thank you. Hi, my name is Travis Waller. I do support it. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know how to unmute myself, but I do support uh, the liquor store being in the shop by parking lot. It's just very convenient. I just wanted to put my voice in there, please. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, Jenny Shea, and um, the same thing. I, I'm in um, support with this liquor store. Um, I think it would be great, the liquor store that was already there. It was nice to have right across the street, and um, it was easy to get to. Um, so yeah, I'm in support as well. 
I'd like to speak? Go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Ricky Oder. I'm uh, one of the uh, two co-chairs of the Mott Hope Canterbury Neighborhood Association. Um, I want to try to represent both sides of our neighborhood. And also, I'd like to invite those who have testified today uh, in support of joint who live in our neighborhood to join our association. We want to hear all voices on all issues. And it's uh, nice to know we have uh, so many neighbors I haven't met yet. Um, one, it's, there's two sides to this. One is our neighborhood has been seen along American Legion as for years as a place for putting many kinds of establishments that nobody else really wants in their neighborhood. We have seven fast food restaurants. We already have five liquor stores. Uh, anywhere in our neighborhood, you're within a quarter of a mile. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yoder, I believe you're breaking up. Everyone else should mute themselves. I mute myself as well. Better? Hello? Better? Hello? Am I coming through? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, we're, we also, well, we're grateful to hear that the uh, store owners have uh, offered to drop the nips. That was one of the major uh, issues I heard from about. Um, the, um, on, the, on the plus side, I have also heard from neighbors I know um, that they're looking for a liquor store that they feel more comfortable in. Um, and that the Stop and Shop Plaza, our, our experience is it's better run than the other mall we have. So we're hoping that would make a difference. Um, and clearly the, um, the owners of the um, Rosendale Liquor Store have some loyal supporters, that's clear. Nevertheless, we already have five liquor stores. We don't see another one as adding to anything that is gonna enhance our neighborhood. Uh, with that one caveat that, um, I mean, the one uh, possible plus is that uh, it might actually be a nicer one than some of the existing ones. If um, on the store hours, we received a letter from um, one of the owners who offered um, uh, to, to have the closing hours, not from Thursday through Saturday to be 1030, not 11. So I, I see a little conflict there. We would actually, if this is approved, have it be 10 o'clock straight across the board. And the reason is that's when Stomp and Shop closes, the food store. And after that, the place kind of goes black. There's a few other stores that are still open. But it, and unfortunately, in the last year or two, we have a roving caravan of merrymakers that show up late at night, particularly on the weekends, uh, not just stop and shop, sometimes other locations around the neighborhood with a very loud sound system, and they basically have a party all night. It would be good if the uh, alcohol was not available to them right there on the premise at that time. Uh, so I think 10 o'clock is a safer closing time. Um, I think I we uh, mailed in all these things. Um, mm -hmm. The store name Discount liquors is exactly the wrong added, um, image we want to have for our neighborhood. Everything's discount here. Oh, cheap. Uh, you've got to have a better name. What's wrong with uh, what you had? Something uh, Blue Hill liquors or something like that. I, I'm not trying to choose it for you, but I, I'd like to have the, if this is approved, I'd like to have that changed. Um, the displays and the windows you have in Rosendale Square look fine to me, but we have a number of uh, other stores in our neighborhood that basically exploit the image of women to sell their product. And that is something we do not want to see in our neighborhood. I'm not saying you will, we're just trying to hedge our bets. Um, and we would like to see some community benefits to our neighborhood other than you know, another store that we don't really need. Um, 
we can, that can be discussed, but uh, our neighborhood is in the need of a lot of help and uh, that would be something to discuss. So in other words, I'm not taking a position as an association one way or the other because we have a split as far as I can tell the neighborhood on this, but I wanna present both sides and, uh, and give some sense of what we're dealing with here in the way um, the type of uh, sort of a monolithic kind of business is that saying this is the place to set up. You know, fast foods and liquor stores, pot shop, smoke house, smoke shop, um, you know, discount uh, hardware, everything's discount. We'd like to see a real sit down restaurant someday after COVID's gone. So that's, uh, that's about all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else present who wishes to testify in opposition? Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, yes, my, my name is Lisa Beatman, and uh, I am the other co-chair of the Mount Hope Canterbury Neighborhood Association in Eastern Rosendale. We are also part of an American Legion Pockets Neighborhood Coalition. Um, this is the first time that we're testifying in front of the licensing board, so we want to make sure that uh, the board members and others understand that American Legion has several thousand residents living in uh, diverse working class uh, neighborhoods uh, on either side of American Legion. Um, it is not a highway, um, but the name highway um, often uh, has people uh, think of it as a place that no one lives on or a place to put uh, things uh, like fast food restaurants and multiple liquor stores. And um, this, um, that's, that's not, <laughs> that's not the way the neighborhood, uh, other neighborhoods are, and that's not the way this neighborhood should be. So we're always looking um, to turn around that, um, that, that image, that incorrect image. Um, uh, so um, we've heard from many of our members, um, and uh, we've seen two people voice support of our several hundred membership. Um, we've heard several people voice opposition. Um, and the name is very, very important. Um, and uh, I, I just can't emphasize that enough, and we've heard from other of our neighbors that um, it's very disrespectful um, to, you know, to, to, to advertise um, that uh, a name like Discount Liquors sounds like, hey, this is a low-end area. Hey, you know, this is where you go for, for low-end merchandise. So it's very, very important if this is approved that the owners um, come up with uh, a more dignified name. Um, uh, the Rick mentioned um, the parties. It's not just parties. American Legion is uh, abused as a speedway. There's a lot of drag racing um, and there's these caravans of 100 to 200 cars that are roaming up and down with dirt bikes and, and they, um, they're uh, blaring music that you can, that's, that's loud two miles away and they are loving these, uh, these large parking lots. And um, uh, so we, uh, you know, we're concerned that yet another liquor store um, will, will be a, a, you know, a draw. And again, ours, we, it would be um, very much uh, a detriment to the community to have alcohol um, be uh, convenient um, for, that, um, for that group of people. We are, uh, our area is not just a commuter drive through. We want to make that clear. And we think that a lot of people think that, and it could be that the owners of this liquor store also think that. This is a neighborhood. Um, and it's a neighborhood that needs improvements. We, have, we don't even have a sit-down restaurant. 
uh, a cook to order sit down restaurant. There's just a lot of things that our neighborhood needs and another liquor store is not one of them. Thank you. We appreciate your testimony. Uh, I will ask that, I'm going to ask again if there's anyone else who wishes to testify uh, for the sake of the length of this hearing and respecting everyone's time, if the points you're going to make have already been made, if you could just be brief um, and note that uh, we, we do appreciate everyone taking the time to testify, both in support and in opposition. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Yes. This is Sarah. Hi, this is Sarah. I live on Belgrade Avenue. And I do support this business because I feel it's more security wise. I feel this will be a little better than the street liquor store. So I do support this business. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify either in support or opposition? I just actually have a question. Um, you did, someone mentioned that there are five liquor stores in the area. Where is the closest one? If someone could state that again, if I didn't hear it. The closest one, I believe, is Rusty's Liquor, which is in the other uh, shopping center, the American Legion Shopping Center, uh, which is, uh, I think, a quarter mile away. Um, but there's uh, liquor stores on, so there's the other liquor stores on American Legion, on Hyde Park Ave, um, down Cummins. Um, it is already very convenient for people to come to our neighborhood or people in our neighborhood to purchase alcohol. Okay, but just to clarify, there's no um, liquor store in that, air, in that shopping center on that strip? Uh, no, oh, and there actually has not been for several years. Uh, they, the owners have said, oh, just a year ago, but it's been several years since there was one. Atlas Liquor up at, um, up Cummings, up at uh, Mount Hope. There's Kelly's Liquor Mart. There's Top Liquors, Rusty's Liquors, and Crest Liquors. Those are the five. And does the attorney or, or um, proposed owner, do, can they address any of the concerns that have been stated? Well, the only thing I can say to you, can you hear me? Okay. The only thing I can say is, and I don't want to get into like an argument about this, but we had a community meeting and at the community meeting, Lisa and, and Rick stated their objection. There were 10, I think there were 10 other people that spoke. One spoke against, nine spoke for. They all wanted it. They live in the area, they wanted it. I saw that Lisa put out a, uh, a, a Facebook thing asking for people to support her in opposition to this. She got responses from people saying they want it, that they, that they, they weren't happy that she was opposing it. I don't know what the organization is they, 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 they represent, but everything I'm hearing, I'm an outsider, so I, I admit to that. But I, I listen at the meetings, I look at what's given to me on Facebook, and everyone seems to, well, not everyone, one person was opposed, but almost everyone wanted it in the neighborhood. But Lisa keeps saying she represents all these people and they don't want it. None of them showed up. None of them came to the community meeting. One did. One person came to that meeting. I'm sorry. We're, we're not going to get into a back and forth where we're representing other I people. I just have, opinions. he said one thing very incorrect. Our notices to the neighborhood, they encourage everyone to participate, to learn and to give their opinion. We make it very, very clear that we don't tell people what their opinion is. So I don't appreciate being, um, having, having an incorrect um, insult like that uh, made. Okay, and for the record, do either of the commissioners have any additional questions for the applicant? No, thank you. Thank you all for your time. The board will take this under advisement and vote on this matter tomorrow. Moving to item 14, calling Fermented Sciences 2, Inc., doing business as Flying Embers, located at 152 Hampton Street, has applied for a farmer brewery pouring license to be exercised on the above in three rooms on the first floor of a three-floor brick and beam building, brewing area located in single room garage consisting of 2,850 square feet, seating area on ground room and tap room and mezzanine consisting of 3,400 square feet, 
Patio one consisting of 1,155 square feet. Patio number two consisting of 1,238 square feet. Patio number three consisting of 648 square feet. All patios are annual outdoor patios on private property with a 2 a.m. closing hour. Manager, Brendan McLean, closing hour, 2 a.m., Attorney Stephen Miller. Hi, Councillor Mungle, we, we can't hear you. Um, I, I think we're having uh, trouble connecting to your audio. We still cannot hear you. Is the applicant present? Yes, Brent McLean here. Brendan, are you comfortable while your uh, while council attempts to connect, giving the commissioners an overview of what you're proposing? Uh, it'd be great if they could connect. Oh, Brendan, I'm here. I can I can take over. Great. Sorry, uh, John Ayeda, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. Um, this is uh, an application for a perming a pouring permit in connection with a farmer brewery license. Um, this is the former site of Backlash Brewing Company at 152 Hamden Street. Um, essentially, the applicant is seeking the pouring permit um, in connection with that farmer brewery license, which has just recently been approved by the ABCC. Um, by way of uh, background, Flying Embers is a company based out of California. They are a um, very successful brewery and they have a uh, well um, thought of and respected brand. And so they've been expanding and looking to come to the East Coast and recently they have uh, um, distributed throughout New England as well. Um, Brendan, by way of experience, has about 15 years in the brewing industry. He's worked at uh, Magic Cat uh, out of Vermont, Oscar Blues, Colorado, and two companies in California, Stone Brewing, as well as Flying Embers, uh, which is the original uh, base in California. So Flying Embers, uh, they have, um, for their product, they have hard kombucha, which is a like a hard tea, as well as hard salsa. So they come with a very distinct and um, unique product and they think it's going to be very successful and has been very successful as they've rolled out distribution here. Um, they are, um, so they found this location, which again was a former brewery, uh, it was Backlash Brewing Company. This is really a perfect fit for um, this company as well as the neighborhood. They do have support uh, from the different um, neighborhood groups and organizations and, and the immediate neighbors. Um, they are committed to seeing it through. Uh, it's a long-term investment, and they are committed to seeing it through um, this project in spite of everything and the setbacks they've had um, during COVID. So it is really a testament to them and to their dedication to um, continue their investment uh, in this property, which is a beautiful building, uh, as well as the investment in the neighborhood. Um, they have on site a tap room with seating, um, a very large garage, which they've done. They're doing the brewing on site. Um, and they are pretty close to, to getting ready and up and running. Um, in terms of the food service, they have a, uh, uh, an agreement with a, with a neighboring company called Bon Me. Um, that is a food truck and they'll have a permanent food truck located on site for the preparation of food. Uh, so they'll be able to easily um, uh, assess and handle um, the clientele that comes through. They have three patios as discussed in the description. So it's gonna be really um, a nice, uh, benefit to the neighbors and anyone coming to, to visit them. And um, if, if the license is approved, we also have plans to extend uh, for the um, safety precautions due to COVID uh, into the neighboring um, parking area as well, uh, which they have, um, you know, uh, explored with their landlord as well and have no, no problems or concerns to do so. Um, as I mentioned, there are, uh, I think the letters of support may have been provided to the board um, previously. Um, but this is, again, was in support from over a year ago or two when Backlash went to this location. Um, although it's a different brewery and different, obviously different um, products, they still have the support of the community. Um, and I think they're going to make great neighbors and be a, a great addition to this um, community. And how many seats and days of operation and hours? Yep, so it'll be seven days a week. Um, 
right now the hours of operation um, they are seeking a 2 a.m. license um, but obviously realistically speaking most nights will close at 10 p.m. Um, obviously if things pick up they would like to have later hours 11 or midnight um, and on some weekend nights obviously the 2 a.m. Um, and for for at this time you know at this time for um, the morning operations we would seek an 8 a.m. license although it's very unlikely they're going to have that um, at this point, they're really looking to capture a brunch service, probably 10 a.m. on Friday, Saturday, Sundays. Um, and then when things pick up, and obviously they hope to expand um, both their menu, um, both their you know alcoholic beverage menu and their food menu, uh, they would like to have the ability and probably open up seven days for, for lunch. Um, so it would probably likely be a 11 a.m. on. But on a given day, and Brendan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, probably on a given day um, when things are up and running, probably 11 a.m. to 11 or, or midnight and then obviously the option on um, if things pick up till 2 a.m. Yeah, that's correct. And oh, seating, sorry. Um, seating, uh, we have, let me just see if I can pull up quickly. Um, inside seating, I know outside the patio, um, the three patios total 100 seats and inside, sorry, let me just see if I can get my number on it. Um, we have 84 inside um, between the the tap room uh, tasting uh, tasting area and the mezzanine and 100 seats outside. So it'd be 100 total of 184 um, more outside than in at this point. And can you home in on the uh, public need for this like type of license in this particular location? Sure. So um, again, this this um, neighborhood had the benefit of having a very similar pouring license in the last brewery operation. So we're really looking to um, continue on that um, experience that the neighbors had. Unfortunately, I think Backlash ended up doing more of their contract brewing and not so much the um, in person. But uh, Flying Embers as a brand has really connected, um, you know, in California and throughout the communities they've gone to and they're really um, reaching it's it's a product that is unique and distinctive um, it's something you can't find most places the, the hard kombucha and it, it's been really trendy so they think it's um, going to be very successful they, they've shown that from their sales and their increase in sales and distribution in New England um, so it's really been driven by the neighborhood as much as it is from the company itself they've they've been around they're building it out um, the landlord's been great um, you know, working with them to get this done. And again, reaching out to the community as well. They've had nothing but support uh, for this. And they think it's going to be a great addition for the dining option as well. And Brandon is the proposed manager of record? Yes, Brandon is the proposed manager of record. So you and he is, he is TIP certified, sorry. Um, and the staff will be TIP certified as well. And Brandon, you're a U.S. citizen? Yes. A resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. And you're familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth regarding the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Curran, do you have any additional questions? Commissioner Saxon, no additional questions? Is there anyone here who wishes to testify in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Jessica Thomas with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the applicant was fully vetted by the Orchard Gardens Neighborhood Association who sent a letter of support and we'd like to go on record to support as well. Thanks. Thank you, Jessica. Anyone else who wishes to speak in support? Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition to this proposal? The board will take this under advisement and vote on this matter tomorrow. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.